Hey guys, what's going on? It's Colin here again, back with another engine video. Today we're taking a look at this, what I think is a Jaeger by Economy, three and a half horsepower engine. Um, this is definitely now the largest engine in my collection, um, and I don't really entirely have room for it, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a three and a half horsepower hit and miss engine made by Economy. I think it's technically a Jaeger, that's, at least that's what I've been told based on this blue paint. Um, this was thrown up on the uh, Long Island Antique Power Association Facebook group. Um, that's my local engine club, by the way, if those of you guys don't know. Um, and the caption read something about along the lines of looking for somebody to take this and give it a new home. Or looking for it to go to a good home or something like that. And before I even saw the post, a couple of my friends tagged me on it and like, Oh, this is for you. This is for you. You know, you got to go get this thing. <laughs> so, uh, naturally... I had to reach out and I asked what the guy wanted for it and he's like, I don't know, I just don't want to see it go to scrap, so how's 20 bucks sound? And I think my jaw just about hit the floor and I was like, yep, I'll be there. So he was nice enough to hold it until I got back from school for Thanksgiving break and I went and picked it up and then it sat until now, which it's now Christmas break, and I'm going to actually try and get, get working on it. But um, yeah, it's a pretty cool engine, it's very large. Well, it's not that large in the grand scheme of things for hit, or flywheel engines or hit and miss engines, but for me, uh, my largest engine previous to this was the Witty, and I think this thing's given the Witty a run for its money. It's pretty freaking big. Um, well, some, some of you guys will know how big a Wyco EK Mag is, so that should give you an idea. Um, I don't have a tape measure on me right now, otherwise I'd measure the diameter of the wheels, but it's heavy too, I can say that much. But yeah, it's a uh, three and a half horsepower hit and miss engine. Which is interesting because most of the economies I've seen with this style flywheel have been throttle governed, not hit and miss. But um, yeah, for 20 bucks I figured I couldn't really go wrong. <clears throat> and my plan is, um, I'm going to try and get it all fixed up and running. And then if I can get some more space for myself at the club, then I will try and keep it there. And I'll build a nice cart for it and everything and add it to the collection just store it out there. But if I can't, I might just try and fix it and flip it and make a couple bucks. We'll have to see. I'd like to keep it. I just really, currently I do not have room for it whatsoever. So it's just a matter of whether I can get more room or not. But um, either way, it's definitely going to be a hell of a project and I'm very excited to start tinkering with it. When I first got it, you could move it about that far back and forth. Um, so I started soaking it with PV Blaster and that's already got it freed up. The main things that are still stuck are the um, push rod and the valves are stuck and um, let's see the mag is all screwed up too or I don't know if it's screwed up but it's pretty rusty and it's stuck as well um, but I'm not really too too worried about things being stuck uh, I've got quite a bit of experience at this point freeing things up the only things I'm worried about are potentially inside this mag I've not popped it open yet I hope that the coils and everything are good in here and it's just a matter of freeing it up I've been told that these Wycos are pretty bulletproof and you can find them sitting in a field for 40 years and they'll still make a spark. So I'm hoping this is one of them. The most major issues with this thing that I can see so far is there's a crack there. And then the water jacket around the head is cracked down and over like this. So um, that's probably the biggest issues. I don't think this one's that big of a deal. I don't think that would be that hard to fix. This one might be a little more difficult to fix. But I figured if nothing else, it would be a good excuse to try and learn how to braze or weld that back together. Um, but before we even get that far, I want to try and get this thing running, because those are only water jackets. It has nothing to do with the combustion chamber. So in theory, if we get everything else freed up, then we should be able to um, run it for a little while before it gets too warm. And then once I see it running and I'm happy with it, then I'll go ahead and start fixing them. But yeah, I figured I'd take you guys along for the ride, because it's going to be a hell of a project. Um, probably put, do a time lapse for this, but I think what I want to go ahead and do is just start taking things apart. See if we can't get some stuff freed up, and um, if we get everything freed up and I'm happy with it, we'll put it back together, see if we can't get it to fire off. There's really not too much to these flywheel engines, so basically if everything's free and working as it should, and you've got compression, spark, and gas, um, and all the other little minor things that you need for combustion, they usually will take off and run. But anyways, guys, I figured, like I said, I'd take you guys along for the ride. So I'm going to go ahead and throw you guys up on the tripod and uh, let's start diving into this thing. All right, before we start the time lapse, I want to apologize in advance. 
Uh, I do not have a lift table. I really want one, but I don't have one. So consequently, with something this big and heavy, I'm working on it on the floor. Um, so I, there's only so much I can do to not get in the way of the video here. So I apologize if at any point I block it for any duration. I'm, just, I'm gonna do my best to avoid it, but uh, I make no promises. But anyways, let's get started. Sets in. Pretty soon I'm singing. Do do do, looking out my back door. Giants doing cartwheels, statues wearing high heels. Look at all the happy creatures dancing on the lawn. Dinosaur controller, listen to Buck Owens. Do do do, looking out my Alrighty guys, so off camera I did a bunch of cleaning um, and as you can see we actually got a decent amount of original paint to show back up on all these parts. I also did a lot of freeing up of different things. 
Um, you saw me get these valves out, that was a pain in the ass. Holy crap, I've never had valves be that stuck in anything before. Um, this one ended up breaking on me. As you can see, the end of it chipped off. And it's also very bent, which is understandable, considering I had the whale on it a fair bit. This one's actually all right. That was the less stuck of the two. Um, these are the uh, connecting rod bearings. Um, but yeah, I went ahead and cleaned everything up, got things freed up. You know, like the, the wheel on the end of the push rod here is free. Um, got the push rod itself freed up. The governor spins nice and free now. So uh, then I went ahead and cleaned everything up, as you can see. Actually got a fair amount of original paint left. And then over on the engine, I didn't show this, um, but I went ahead and cleaned up the crankshaft a bit because when I popped the uh, main bearings off, it was evident that some moisture had gotten in there and it was a little bit rough. So I went ahead with some Scotch-Brite and cleaned that up a bit. Um, cleaned up the piston and rod in my parts cleaner too. So that's all good to go. So um, pretty much at this point, I'm gonna start some reassembly here. Um, gonna go ahead and put all this stuff back together, get it back on the engine, clean up the bore a bit, see if we can't get the piston slapped back in the thing and the main caps back on and everything like that. Then we'll have to tackle the head here and the mag, which are gonna be the two biggest problems on this engine I can predict already. Um, gonna go ahead and lap this one good valve back in on the intake side. And I've got one here that's definitely incorrect, but uh, I might go ahead and try it anyways, just for shits and giggles. Um, this is, I'm gonna start with the mag, assuming I can get the mag to work. I'll try that just to see if we can't hear this thing pop and run a little bit, even if it's not gonna run well. Um, but I'll have to see. I might also just research how much one of these valves will cost and see if I can't just get a new one. Um, like I did for a different engine I've got here that I'll show you guys at some point. But um, yeah, anyways, just figured I'd give you guys a little uh, progress update here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start reassembly. Kind of forget where I left off with this one, but I literally just got back from uh, Wine Dench Machine Company, or machine shop, I should say, um, which is a semi-local 
engine rebuilding shop. And a super nice guy there, Tony, um, hooked me up with a new valve for this thing. It's out of a diesel engine, I forget which one. But he went ahead and sandblasted my good original valve and he cut it. And then he found this uh, diesel valve and cleaned it up and cut it too. So now we got two good valves for this engine. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to use the diesel valve as the intake, I think. And the uh, original as the exhaust, like so. And then I think uh, we're going to go ahead and lap these in. And we'll get the springs and stuff put back on. I found a spring that I think that will work for the intake. It's nice and soft. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw the head back up on the engine. Uh, see what kind of compression it's got. And even though the mag is still soaking with PB Blaster, maybe I can rig up some sort of ignition system with a buzz coil. And we might actually get to hear this thing fire off today. So I'm getting pretty excited. So I'm going to go ahead and lap these valves in. And uh, let's continue on. There you can see how the seat cleaned up. Forgot to show the other one, but it cleaned up equally as nice. Let's see if I can bring the valve in here. There you go. See that nice line there, right in the middle, as it should be, where the uh, the seat uh, and the valve were meeting there. So that's that done. I actually changed my mind. I made the replacement valve the uh, the exhaust because the keeper setup that I have works much better with this spring than the one I'm going to use on the uh, intake. So, anyways, just figured I'd show you guys that and uh, carry on here. <laughs> yes! Let's go! Alrighty guys, so as you guys just saw, we actually had a successful first fire up on this thing. Um, and since then, I've done a lot of monkeying around with it, and I've gotten it to run much, much, much better. So I figured I'd do an update here, and also just talk about a little bit of what I did. Um, so yeah, we got, managed to get everything all unseized and all put back together here. Got the new valve installed, uh, ended up making it the intake. I don't remember what I said. I originally was going to make it the exhaust, but I ended up making it the intake. And uh, those are both happy as can be. That works out really nice. Just put a slightly stronger spring on it. 
Um, cleaned out the mixer. Apparently this thing was plugged up. Got the check ball working. Right now it's just sitting in a thing of gas here. I have not dove into that tank yet. I don't know what it what that's going to be like. <laughs> I figured there's no point in going into it until we get the head braised back together. Um, made a quick temporary homemade farmer's ignition system here. I took a block of wood and I uh, pulled this bracket out with the spark plug, put two lag bolts through it, and then ran some strapping up the bottom so that it interacts with the uh, trip arm there. And uh, again, super temporary. The mag is still soaking. The points are super, super seized on it. And uh, I just wanted to have something to fire this with without going and stealing a uh, mag off a different engine. So that actually worked out really nice. Um, did not get grease fittings for these yet. I've been pumping some grease in with the grease gun as it's been running and it's been taking a little bit. This thing I've been running plenty of grease through. This I've just been putting oil down with an oiler. But um, yeah, I made some new shims for the connecting rod here so that turns nice now. It's got, the compression came back a decent amount. As you can see it bounces off. Still got a slight leak out the intake. Not entirely sure how or why that's happening. But honestly, it's running good enough at this point that I don't really want to mess with it anymore. Um, so I figured I'd go ahead and do is uh, fire this thing up, show you guys how well it's running. And then I think we'll call this the end of this video. Because um, what I'm going to end up doing is taking this head up to school with me. And Jake, also known as Five Tractor Guy, is going to teach me how to braise. And we're going to braise it back together. And then once I get the head back together, and I'll probably fix that crack too. Then I'll go ahead and do stuff like the gas tank and get the mag working and get actual grease fittings and stuff in there, all the little things to make this a complete and fully functional engine. And I think after all that's done, which will likely be the summertime, uh, I'll go ahead and make an update video on this thing. It's just that if I try and wait and video all that stuff, I'm not going to be able to get this video out for like another six months. So I figured may, might as well you know, show you guys that we got it running um, and then get the video out. But anyways, enough rambling. I'm going to throw you guys up on the tripod. Let's fire this thing up, and I'll show you how it runs. All right. Show you guys how this thing runs here. Set it to full speed first. Make it a little more exciting. Just going to give this a prime. Got plenty of gas in there. Just run this with a DC power supply off to the side here because I don't have a car battery. And uh, here we go. Off it goes. So I decided I want a little bit of choke, so I put the choke on. Screwdriver's there to keep the choke in place because the spring on that's worn out. But this is full speed, as you can probably tell. Got yeah, a shot of this ignition system working here. down the driveway a little bit. It actually echoes in the neighborhood. I'm lower down the driveway. Hopefully the camera can pick up on that. It's actually echoing off this hill. Which is pretty funny. I'm gonna go ahead and slow it down here before it gets too too warm. This is the medium speed setting. A little calmer. That's the slowest speed setting there. Which is more of where I like to run it. Especially when there's no cooling water in it. You can run it for like 45 minutes on the slowest speed setting. You can still put your hand on the head in the cylinder. It barely gets hot. 
And then what I've figured out is you can actually take this and force it even further back over to get it to run even slower. Like that. Which is actually a really nice speed. Sorry the lighting in here is not the best. Might actually be able to drop the choke now. It was letting me do that earlier. It actually runs really, really nice. I'm very, very happy with this. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this on the video or not yet, but I talked to the previous owner of this. It was his grandfather's, and the last time that he said it ran was about 1985. So it's oh, running a little lean now. Might want some joke. There we go. But yeah, this is the last this is the first time it's run for an extended period of time since 1985, which is mind-boggling. I don't know how long it was sitting outside for, but it must have been pretty long for it to get as frozen up as it was. But yeah, I'm super, super happy with it. Runs really nice, and it's a nice piece. Apparently these are kind of rare, being a hit and miss and not a throttle govern with this style of flywheel. But um, yeah, I think it's gonna clean up really nice. Jake thinks that we can braise it. It's gonna be a bit of a job, but he thinks we can do it. So we get the head all brazed up. Um, this one, I'm gonna see if it leaks or not. If it leaks, I'll braise it. If not, I might just leave it, I don't know. Gonna get an oiler, some grease cups, and a couple other things but overall I'm pretty damn happy with it. I think we'll go ahead and shut her down. Oops. Went off a bit early there. There we go. But yeah, like I said, I'm super, super happy with it and uh, came out really, really good. So with that, I think I'm going to call this a video. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you see, you can hit the little like and subscribe buttons. I'd appreciate that. By all means, leave a comment if you have one and I'll see you in the next one. And stay tuned for an update video on this probably around the summertime too. But anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.